Hello everyone. Today we are going to derive the stiffness matrix of a quadratic Bohr element. Before we get straight into the business of deriving the stiffness matrix of a quadratic Bohr element, there are two good derivations that you should become conversant with. Number one, the shape function derivation of a quadratic Bohr element. Number two, the weak form derivation of the governing differential equation of a cantilever bar subjected to uniformly distributed axial load or uniformly varying axial load. The weak form derivation is almost the same for these two loading conditions. Let us begin. I have already derived the shape functions of a quadratic bar element. I can give the link in the description below. The derivation that you just see here, I have already derived. Okay. Now, if you look at this equation, this equation gives the equation for displacement of your cantilever bar, okay, which means that it actually gives the equation of displacement at any point in the bar. And if you look at this particular expression, this is of the form n1 u1 plus n2 u2 plus n3 u3. So you can very nicely write this equation as n1 u1 plus n2 u2 plus n3 u3. Now when you have the equation for displacement, you can easily find the strain at any point. Because you have the displacement at any point, you can also find the strain at any point in the bar. So the strain at any point in the bar is given by the expression by dif differentiating this equation, you can actually get the strain at any point in the bar. Okay, now when you differentiate this equation, you can easily write dn1 by dx, which is the differentiation as n1 dash and dn2 by dx as n2 dash and dn3 by dx as n3 dash. It just comes in handy. Okay, now let us look at the weak form expression of the governing differential equation of a cantilever bar subjected to uniformly distributed axial load. The weak form expression can be written something like this. As I said, I can give the link for this derivation in the description below. Okay, this is the weak form. What you do in the weak form is you reduce the order of the governing differential equation. That's what you have to you actually do in the weak form by using some clever mathematics you actually dial down the order of the governing differential equation sorry about the little bit of background life here okay now if you look at the this expression the left hand side of this weak form expression will actually give you the stiffness matrix when properly operated it's actually going to give you the stiffness matrix we are going to do that the right hand side of this big form expression gives you the point load as well as the uniformly distributed load which means that it's going to give you the force matrix now let us see how the left hand side of this weak form can give you the stiffness matrix you already have this expression that is du by dx now if you look at this uh, w suffix i in the weak form expression w suffix i represents the weighing function and weighing function is nothing but the trial solution with the constants removed. In our case, the weighing functions are the same as the shape functions because the constants are u1, u2, u3. If you remove them, you will be getting n1, n2, n3. So the weighing functions are the constants, I mean the, the trial solutions without the constants. Now all we are going to do is we are going to substitute for i is equal to 1 how the weak form expression is going to turn out. Now I'm going to concentrate only on the left side because the left side is going to give me the stiffness matrix. Okay, when you put i is equal to 1, what happens to this expression is the expression becomes dn1 by dx into u1 plus dn2 by dx into u2 plus dn3 by dx into u3. Mathematics is just like moving objects. I have just uh, substituted the value of du by dx that you got already that is the expression for strain that you got already I have simply substituted and dwi by dx when i is equal to 1 it becomes dw1 by dx and what is dw1 by dx it's simply dn1 by dx that's what I'm substituting 
and I'm going to integrate this expression with respect to dx. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this expression, uh, I'm going to multiply dn1 by dx and I'm also going to write the notations in its short form. So I'll be getting n1 dash squared into u1 plus n1 dash n2 dash into u2 plus n1 dash n3 dash into u3. Of course, I'm going to integrate with respect to dx. All right. Now, this is going to be my equation number one. Now, if I substitute for i is equal to 2 and for i is equal to 3, I'll be getting two more equations. So, for i is equal to 2, I'll be getting this expression. All right. That is going to be my equation number 2. And for i is equal to 3, I'll be getting this particular expression. So this is for i is equal to 3. Now all I have to do is write the three equations in the form of your matrix. So if I write the three equations in the form of your matrix, I can write them in the form of your matrix like this. Note this, this is going to be a diagonal matrix, which means that the first row is going to be the same as the first column and the second row is the same as the second column. And I'm going to integrate this. Now, it will take some time. I want you to try this out in the privacy of your room. If you just substitute the values of n1 dash square, n1 dash n2 dash, n1 dash n3 dash, so on and so forth, if you substitute this, you will be getting a big matrix with a quaternion integral something like this. All right. Now, all you have to do is integrate this. Of course, it's going to take some time, but if you integrate this, substitute the limits, what is that you are going to get? Well, you are going to get the stiffness matrix. But this is the expression that you will be getting if you integrate and substitute the limits. Of course, the first row is the same as the first column. The second row is the same as the second column. That's right. So it's a diagonal matrix. Stiffness matrix are always symmetric matrix. Okay. And not diagonal matrix. I'm sorry if I'm if I just mispronounce that. Okay. All right. Now you can take this one by three allowed side in order to get the final stiffness matrix. If you just take the one by three allowed side, you'll be getting the expression for the final stiffness matrix of a quadratic bar element. Now remember, quadratic bar element with quadratic bar element, what you can actually do is you can actually solve the problem with fewer number of elements compared to the linear bar elements. If you're using linear bar elements, you have to use more number of elements. So quadratic bar elements where you use fewer number of elements, that is what is called as P method. And in the case of linear bar elements where you are going to use more number of elements, that is called as the H method. Hope this video is useful. Thank you so much.